What do we do as a church with this idea of the kingdom of God in Minnesota? Thank you, Jeff, for that grounding in scripture. I have been doing a lot of reading on this, as you all know, since Lent, and I, it still is a lot to absorb and take in in a good way. Um, if we have any hope of reclaiming our Jesus and Christianity from the evils of colonialism and indigenous genocide, we cannot only, we must not only speak the truth, but act on the truth. I'm here to just briefly introduce what a land acknowledgement is so you understand what you're um, about to hear from, from um, some representatives from our elder board. A land acknowledgement is a public confession of whose land we're on and how it was stolen. It's a way to educate ourselves and others. It's a means of honoring the continued stewardship and leadership of our indigenous neighbors. And it's a value guide for living out our solidarity and our commitment to justice. This started back in Lent when we initiated our journey of truth-telling, right? We lamented about what we learned of the violent and oppressive acts committed in God's name. We visited and honored Bedote, those who went on the sacred sites tour, the sacred place of creation for Dakota people. And from God's call to us as a people to respond is where our land acknowledgement came from. A land acknowledgement is not just words, it's that, but it's more than that. It's our theological and historical foundation for the actions we take as a people. And as Jared sang this morning, it is part of our song and our road to the kingdom of God. You can follow along if you want. There are some um, like little handouts in each row that give a little bit of context as well as the long version, which is what we're going to read today. And there's some reflection questions on there so that you can absorb and take what you hear and think about what it means for us as a church and for you as an individual as well. So I'll ask Alec, Dave, and Stina to come on up and read for us. Calvary Baptist Church is located on sacred Dakota land in the area stewarded by the Mendota, Midewakanton, Dakota tribal community and in close proximity to the Anishinaabe and Ho-Chunk territories. This land was first stolen by Zebulon Pike in 1805 in a purchase that was never fully paid nor approved by most Dakota tribes. The Dakota resisted the ways of white Americans in parceling land to individuals and viewing creation as a resource to exploit, even when treaties and other government acts in 1851 and 1863 forced them to cede all Dakota land and be expelled from Minnesota. The Dakota continued to honor their familial relationship with this land even when boarding schools destroyed their culture and harmed their children. The Dakota remain here today, leading the call for all Minnesotans to heal our land, care for our children, and reject oppression in its many forms. Calvary Baptist Church acknowledges that we have inherited a legacy of abusing God's name to steal, murder, exploit, and lie. The leg this legacy has deeply harmed our Dakota neighbors and has kept us from seeing what we also lost in our relationship to creation and creator. We have benefited financially and socially in the use of our church building on stolen land for which we paid next to nothing in money yet have paid a costly amount in the damage to our relationship with our indigenous neighbors. For too long, we have ignored the cries for justice. Though Jesus calls us to live in truth and actively love our neighbors as ourselves, we have continued to be tempted by values of ownership and control, acting as though we earn through hard work what has only ever been a gift from God to benefit all people. As a church, God calls us to join our indigenous neighbors in the work of repairing broken relationships, healing our own distorted theologies, and creating wholeness for all. 
We seek to repent of our past and turn from continued harm today by committing to the following actions. Commit to learning from our indigenous neighbors how to steward and love the land while challenging the white supremacist values of control and exploitation in how we operate as a church. Commit to telling the truth about our history, particularly with new members and at community events for our own healing. Commit to financial reparations through paying annual back rent on our land to Dakota and Ojibwe organizations. Commit to an ongoing relationship with Dakota communities to provide accountability for us in our journey and to be in loving solidarity with our neighbors. Commit to supporting environmental justice and tribal sovereignty as part of our values of justice and of the earth as God's good gift for all our neighbors. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the journey you have led us on this year, guiding us to realize injustices committed in your name, to repent for our part in this, and to find ways to contribute to repair work. It can be overwhelming and unfamiliar, but we know that you are our shepherd in this and are with us. Help us to grow deeper in your love for all people and in our indigenous solidarity efforts. God, we thank you for our Dakota neighbors and for our indigenous congregants and friends. We are in debt to the love that they have shown to us and to this land, fiercely fighting to protect their sovereignty and place. Thank you for their leadership and resistance, calling us to return to the work of healing and shalom for all. Amen. So we invite you to um, take this land acknowledgement with you, uh, to reflect on it, to begin to ask yourself how might you or your household respond and how you might respond as a part of this Calvary body. And as a first step of what we learned during Lent, we would like to make financial reparations um, and I have a check here, to Makoche Ikikichupe, which means Dakota Land Recovery. They are a cultural land and recovery organization that we sent volunteers to work with this summer. If you would feel a call to be a part of one of those or part of the working group that is guiding our indigenous solidarity efforts and how to act on the commitments that we are making, in this land acknowledgement. We encourage you to reach out to Savannah or myself or email connect at Calvary Church Minneapolis. We will be in the process of identifying another indigenous partner organization later this fall. Sometimes all of this can seem like a lot and it can, I imagine you have questions, that's normal. Um, maybe you feel like you need to know more. Um, but we're all on this journey of learning together. So we invite you to take the next step. Um, if you have questions, come and talk to us. We'd be happy to uh, uh, share more with you. Thank you so much for your time and for listening to this land acknowledgement today. <laughs>